Hi, this is Dr. Molly Gebrian, and you are watching part three in a five-part series of what musicians can learn about practicing from current brain research. If you missed the first two parts of this series, um, I put the links in the comments below so you can go watch those. This one is going to be about how to use your metronome, specifically how to use your metronome to improve your sense of pulse. So let's get started. The information I'm going to share with you today comes from a study on non-musicians and what these people had to do in this study was very simple. They put them into a brain scanner, an fMRI machine that shows what parts of your brain are active when you're doing a particular task. And the experimenters turned on a metronome and the people had to tap along with the metronome and then the experimenters turned the metronome off and they had to keep tapping. That's all they had to do, very simple. And so they were looking at what were their brains doing when they were tapping along to the metronome versus once the metronome was off. This graphic here shows what they found in the different conditions. So just to explain what you're looking at, this is a series of brains viewed from the top down, so a bird's eye view of brains. The S column is showing what the brain is doing when they are synchronizing their tapping to the metronome. The C column is what the brain was doing when they were continuing to tap after the metronome went off. L and D is something else, we don't care about that, so don't look at those columns. Anything that is colored, um, those are areas of the brain that are active when people are doing whatever task they're doing. So as you can see, the S column and the C column are similar but not identical. You can see in the C column there's some little red blobs that are not present in the S column. What this means is that when the metronome is off, your brain is doing something fundamentally different than when the metronome is on. This is why you can play with perfect rhythm with a metronome, no rushing, no dragging, but then you turn the metronome off and there are still the same rhythm problems or rushing or dragging problems that were there before you played with the metronome. These areas of the brain that are active when the metronome is off together are known as the sensory motor loop. And these parts of the brain are associated with the explicit timing of movements in the absence of external stimulation. So external stimulation in this case is a metronome. When you have to time and pace out movements on your own without something external helping you to do that, it's these areas of the brain, the sensory motor loop, that have to turn on. But the minute there's external stimulation, like a metronome, they turn off and they don't have to do anything. And unless you're going to be a session player in LA and have a click track in your ear, you're never going to perform with the metronome. And so if you only ever practice staying steady with a metronome on, these parts of your brain don't get to practice what they're going to have to do when you go to perform. Okay, so how can you actually use your metronome to help you stay steady? Because I'm not advocating not to practice with the metronome. I love to practice with the metronome. Everything I'm about to share with you assumes that when the metronome is on clicking, you know, every beat, that you can stay with it. I know that's a difficult thing for many people, especially young children. Um, so that is a requirement to be able to do before you can try what I'm about to share with you. So assuming you can stay steady when the metronome is on every beat, Here's some ideas for how to use the metronome to help you stay steady, but also allow those parts of your brain to practice. So the first thing to do is to turn on your metronome and have it click off beats only. So I'm going to turn on my metronome and you can tap off beats with me. So now we're going to count with our tapping. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to stop tapping and stop counting. The metronome should sound like it's off the beat now, that it's clicking the off beats. So if it turned around on you, if it sounds like, if that's the beat, that means you lost the sense of pulse. So if it turned around on you when we stopped tapping and we stopped counting and it sounded like it was on the beat, that means that your sense of pulse, your internal sense of pulse is not very strong. So you should work on that. That's not a judgment. It's just a statement of fact. Um, so that's the first step. Get it on off beats only like we just did and then play your piece with it clicking like that on the, on the off beat. Next step is for to have your metronome click every other beat. So if you're in 4-4, four, four, have it click on 1 and 3 or 2 and 4. 
Um, next step after that, click every downbeat only, every other downbeat, then every third downbeat, etc. So what this does is it makes those parts of your brain that have to turn on when the metronome's off more and more responsible for keeping you steady, but you still have the objective metronome checking in with you every once in a while to keep you honest. An app I wanna share with you is called Time Guru. Um, and this is a metronome app that has a really cool feature called Random Mute. You can see in the, in the screenshot here that I've posted. Um, so with the Random Mute function, it's on a slider. And if I set it up to be on 30%, it's going to randomly mute 30% of the beats. So you can hear most of them are there, and then every once in a while, um, a beat will fall out. Okay. If I now slide it up to 80%, you can hear that most of the beats are gone. Every once in a while, it will click. Um, actually, it's doing a lot more than normal. Usually it goes a long time. There we go, there's a long pause. Um, there is a click. So if you play your piece, and if it clicks when you're on a beat, you know you're steady. It feels awesome, actually. It's very frustrating, but then when the click goes on and you're exactly with it, you feel like, oh my gosh, I have the best rhythm ever. So this is a really, really fun thing to do. It also has a gradual function. So if you turn that on, you if I slide the slider up to 80%, it will start off with most of the beats there and then gradually mute up to 80% of the beat. So that's a really, really good challenge too. I also want to show you how I get my metronome to click every third or fourth downbeat. So I don't put it on some crazy, crazy slow tempo. I put it on my tempo. I set my metronome to a meter that has a whole bunch of beats in it. So in this screenshot here, I've set it to 12-4, assuming that I'm in 4-4. Four, four. So 12-4 would be, in this case, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4 downbeat. And so I will set it so only the downbeat makes a sound. And this metronome, when you tap the little circles, they silence themselves. And so they don't make a sound anymore. Um, if you're curious, this metronome is called Tempo Metronome by, by Tempo Ape, like, like the monkey. Um, and so I silence everything except for the downbeat. And so it will click on the downbeat. So it'll be like one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, click. So that's how I get it to click every second or third or something downbeat. Um, put it on a meter with a bunch of beats, turn off all the beats but the downbeat, and then you can play at your tempo. The nice thing also about this metronome is when you tap on the circles to silence them, they still sort of light up so you can see how fast you're going to get yourself started and then just don't look at the metronome once you start playing. I find that practicing this way is a really good challenge. It's very fun. It's very effective. I make all of my students do it. Um, they often, they don't like it at first because it's very hard, but all of them come to see how effective it is. So I highly recommend that you try it out. For those of you taking orchestral auditions, this is, I think, a must do um, because you're required to be absolutely steady when you play your excerpts, including counting through rests many times. Um, and so putting it on every third or fourth downbeat or something and making sure you are exactly with the metronome when it clicks is a very, very effective way of making sure that your excerpts are absolutely rock solid steady. All right, that's it for this video. So I hope you will join me for part four of this series. That part is going to be about the importance of sleep in learning. If there's anything like a magic bullet in practicing, it's sleep. So um, thanks for watching this one and I hope you'll join me over there.